David Berlin coming to you from CES 2012 in Las Vegas where there are tons of gadgets here on display and one of the most popular gadgets you'll find on the show floor are smartphones, the newest, slimmest, smallest smartphones. And one thing that people don't realize is what is it that makes the smartphones so, so thin and so small? How do you get those components that are inside down to a tiny, tiny little footprint so that you can make them that small? Well, sitting with me is Stephen Lum. He is product marketing manager for the mobile memory group at Samsung. And Samsung is largely responsible for why it is we have such small phones. Is that true? Absolutely. Uh, so Samsung manufactures a wide variety of different types of memory. So you have the flash memory and the DRAM memory in these mobile phones as well as other mobile devices. So what you find... And, and you've got a mobile phone here, so which one yes. is this? So this is the uh, Samsung Galaxy S mobile okay. phone. Yep. Um, and it uses, it's actually last year's model, but it uses the mobile DRAM that we manufacture and sell in this year's model as well as future models. Mm -hmm. um, it's a... Galaxy being a very popular phone, right? The new Galaxy S, being new very S2 popular. is the hot new phone, right? That's right. It's going to be running the uh, ice cream sandwich, is that right? Um, it runs uh, gingerbread and the Nexus is actually running the Nexus, ice cream I'm sorry, sandwich. right, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. okay. So uh, it runs a uh, mobile DRAM, or uses a mobile DRAM component called LPDDR2, uh, which is our uh, fastest mobile DRAM mm -hmm. that's available on the market today. In fact, Samsung was the first to produce uh, what we call 1066 megabits per second mobile DRAM um, for LPDDR2. And it's uh, right now uh, in a wide range of mobile phones from OEMs uh, around the world, mm -hmm. and actually. I would say virtually all of the major OEM lines have some sort of Samsung memory in it. Okay, yeah, wow. So uh, you guys really are responsible for shrinking the, the mobile phone down. I mean, especially compared to the days of the brick phone that we had right. from Motorola, right? absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's not only shrinking it down, but it's also being able to add more memory so you can run more applications simultaneously. So it allows you to do multitasking, more complex games, higher resolution displays, uh, using less battery. Right. Um, which means you can run it longer. So what, what is the difference between uh, just RAM and DRAM when we're talking about a mobile platform? Why is DRAM so much more important? Uh, mobile, uh, DRAM specifically allows you to basically store your application data as the program is running. Uh, so it stores all of the kind of what we call the volatile data, mm -hmm. right? But when applications run, it needs to access that data uh, very quickly. Uh, and so mobile DRAM allows you to store that data, allows you to keep the applications in memory, allows you to switch between the applications very, very quickly. Um, so LPDDR2 is the current standard. We're also working on a new version of uh, low-power DRAM called LPDDR3. Mm -hmm. LP um, standing for low power. LP for low power, Okay. right. Uh, and DDR for double data rate. Okay. And uh, I mean, one of the things I'm thinking of that, uh, that more resources can afford you is uh, we saw a technology being demonstrated yesterday by uh, VMware, VMware Horizon, mm -hmm. which is the ability to virtualize the Android operating system right. uh, or run uh, a second copy of the Android operating system mm -hmm. in a virtual machine right. on an Android host, right. which to me was just crazy because I, mean, I can barely run a virtual uh, machine on my MacBook Pro, right, and now right. I'm looking at one running on a, on a smartphone. Right. But, it, but you probably need a fair amount of system resources. They, they claim they're aiming for the mid-market, mm -hmm. but uh, the mid-market mid these days, I'm, I'm guessing, it, you know, it, those resources are pretty hefty. Uh, Absolutely. When you think, yeah. I mean, if you look at the uh, smartphones today, I mean, they're doing 3D graphics, running multiple applications, you're doing email, uh, you're also being able to receive phone calls at the same time. Uh, so these devices are very, very capable. I mean, they're virtually computers in the palm of your hand. Speaking of that, so, so like, what's the, um, if we take today a, a smartphone, one of today's smartphones, let's say the new Galaxy or the Nexus, you know, where would you say that um, aligns against the PC? Like, how, like this is as, as powerful as a PC that is how many years old? Um, I would say it's definitely as powerful as a PC as you saw in the 90s, uh, if not in the earlier part of uh, the last decade. Uh -huh. uh, but it's, I mean, you're looking at dual core processors in these things. Next year, actually uh, this year, in 2012, you're going to see quad core processors mm -hmm. in mobile phones, right? So you have four cores. I mean, your PC today, your top end PC uh, or high end PCs, uh, quad core uh, in general. So these things are running slower than a PC. So, you know, your PC runs at three gigahertz and up, and mobile phones are around one and a half gigahertz at the high end mm -hmm. of the uh, clock range. Is, it, is the gap closing? Gap is absolutely closing. And when, when do you think right. it'll cross over, if ever? Um, 
We, we'll see. I mean, <laughs> it really depends on the chips and manufacturers, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's closing very quickly. Because, I mean, if you look at the, uh, towards the end of this year, Windows 8 will be coming on ARM processors. ARM is the uh, processors that are typically used on smartphones. That's right. right? We're going to be talking to ARM right. uh, later this week here right. at CES 212, uh, 2012. So uh, when you think about um, how you're driving down the size, right? You drive down the size, you're driving down the cost, right? right? Um, at what point, you know, how close do we get to a commodity market for things like smartphones and tablets? And um, what does that mean for uh, companies like Apple? I know you can't spe specifically comment on Apple, but you right. have a market leader in, in the space. And now suddenly, you know, everybody else has access to the same sort of technology that enabled them. Um, you know, are we going to start to see the market start to balance out a little bit? Um, I think uh, a lot of the OEMs are looking for ways to differentiate themselves, uh, mm -hmm. and you know each of the OEMs will find different ways of customizing uh, their products, right? So one of uh, the latest trends that you've seen in phones, like the Droid phone from Motorola, is the fact that they're making it the thinnest smartphone in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one way to, to, to kind of differentiate yourself. It's Although there was another vendor here earlier today Huawei, who announced that they have now the thinnest phone in the world, right, right. although they couldn't show it to us. It, it, it was kind of funny. They were like, had this big press briefing. We have the thinnest phone out there, and they didn't, and show, they didn't it. show it. So, uh, yeah, okay. Right. And one of the things that enables the uh, thinness of the phones is mm -hmm. uh, you know, you need thin components, right, on, on the board. And uh, Samsung has gone a long way to actually introducing the thinnest uh, 8 gigabit uh, LPDDR2 product this year, and then we're also going to be able to provide a 16 gigabit uh, LPDDR2 product as well. Um, so when we talk about thin, we're talking about you're going to fit 8 gigabit in a 0.8 millimeter package or double that 16 gigabit in a 1 millimeter package. And when you think 1 millimeter, that's pretty, pretty thin. Right, but you know, when you're talking about supporting all the different applications, you take something, uh, I'm thinking the iPhone. The, 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 the phone itself is probably like 50% if not more battery. Right. Right? Um, right. So uh, when you get these really thin packages, one of the concerns I have, one of the concerns I have is about battery life. You know, right. you're going to play music on these, you're going to take pictures, show video, make phone calls, browse the web, update your Facebook, right. and halfway through the day, your device is dead. Um, so, you know, what's happening in the area, you know, from the memory point of view, maybe mm -hmm. other components that you're aware of, um, you know, are we going to get to a place where um, battery life becomes more of a non-issue? Are we, are we improving there? I think we're looking at uh, improving battery life over time. So, different types of memory technologies, particularly low-power DRAM, enables longer battery life than your traditional mm -hmm. DRAM that you find in, say, a PC or a notebook computer. Um, but any quantum leaps coming where suddenly, because of a new low-power DRAM from Samsung, uh, battery life is going to jump by 25% or, right. or some percentage that's noticeable to the end user? Well, if you look at, uh, say, standby power, for instance, on a low-power DRAM, uh, that is about 8.8 .8 times lower than a DDR3 memory mm -hmm. in equivalent density, right? So you're looking at 9x the uh, amount of standby of time that you can have on a uh, mobile phone. Or, you know, for instance, uh, actually Intel's talking about using low-power DRAM in Ultrabooks next year. Um, so you're going to be able to find that. You're going to be able to have your Ultrabook on standby, uh, be able to press that button, have it instantly come on at any point in time. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a um, tablet, right? Kind of so like a tablet, yeah. yeah right. Instant on capability. Uh, Chromebooks, but you know, that's right, good for right. using internet uh, right. terminals, that yeah. sort of thing. So, I mean, that in itself is a big quantum leap, right? Mm -hmm. So you're taking these PCs where, you know, say you put it on standby, you know, over say the weekend, you come back and half your battery's gone, right. even though it was on standby, right? With low power DRAM, you know, you come back on your weekend, uh, virtually all of the power is available. And, right, and device. I know you can't right. comment on it because uh, uh, your counterpart, we had another gentleman invited to join this interview, he's going to talk about Samsung's SSDs, but right. there again, we're, we're saving a lot of uh, battery life when Absolutely. we move to SSD technology right. because, uh, particularly in something like, um, uh, you know, uh, an Ultrabook because uh, there you're not spinning up a hard drive right. and all the power that's required to do that. SSD, of course, solid state technology, so right. very much like memory requires less power. Exactly, yeah. So and as you know, SSDs uh, use significantly less uh, power. Uh, and then when Ultrabooks use low power DRAM, you're going to add that additional capability and lower power consumption to that device. When do the two come together? I mean, is there a point in the future where right. Basically, it's you know SSD, you know right. uh, DRAM, basically the same technology. Just uh, uh um, you know, 
I can't really comment on you know, <laughs> some of our future memory technologies, yeah. but certainly that would be ideal that you'd have one memory technology that would serve the purpose of being uh, your, your main memory mm -hmm. as well as your storage memory. Uh, and certainly that would be an ideal situation. But if you look at these devices, you have the combination of flash memory uh, as well as mobile DRAM, and then in Ultrabooks, uh, eventually SSDs as well as low power DRAM as well, all on the uh, same device. Right, it's kind of like the radios. You got like 15 radios in these devices, right. all different kinds of memory. Right. At one point, one radio, one kind of memory, right. better battery life. Everything all on one chip, you know, that's just right. one package. Right, right. that's right, and a big honking screen on it, the right. multi-touch screen that we can play with, right? Right, exactly. Okay, well, Stephen Lum, uh, Marketing Manager with Samsung for the Mobile Memory Group, thanks very much for joining us. Great, thank you very much. I'm David Berlin, coming to you from CES 2012. Thanks very much.